Welcome again, everybody. It's been a while since we saw chess cases, so let's take this case to uh, review a few important points. This is a 31-year-old male patient who presents with a shortness of breath and fatigability. And this is his lateral chest radiograph. Let's look at this normal case before we proceed with the other one. The first point is to look at the mediastinum. The mediastinum should not be enlarged and the borders should not be convex outwards. Okay, so as you see here, the borders are relatively straight and there are no convexity and the mediastinum is not enlarged. The second area I want you to look at is the hyla. The hyla could be assessed by checking for four points. First, location, second, density, third, size, and fourth, border. In a normal case, the left hilum is slightly higher than the right. The hyla should not have increased densities and they should be symmetric in density. They should not be increased in size. The size should be equal comparing right to left and it should not have any bulging borders. The third area I wanted to concentrate on is the area below the bifurcation of the trachea, which is known as the carina. And this area here is uh, known as the subcarinal region. You should not have any masses here that could be uh, detected by looking at the density of the radiograph. Here's a normal lateral radiograph. What I want to emphasize is that you could see the trachea, you could see the hyalur structures, the vessels are seen as white in front and behind the airways in this region. Just one point to emphasize without going into much details here is that the region below the hyla is typically a clear area. It looks relatively dark. You don't have any opacities here, so that's normal. Keep this in mind when we look at the abnormal case. Keeping all that in mind, let's look at the abnormal case again. So this young male patient has multiple abnormalities. The first is obvious in the mediastinum. The mediastinum is widened. Both left and right borders are bulging. We know from the normal anatomy that you could see the tracheal dark air column here. It should be a central column. However, there is a minimal impression on the right side of the trachea and minimal deviation to the left. So this tells you that this abnormality is compressing on the trachea as well. Now to the hilum, compared to the left, you could tell that it has an increased size, increased density and bulging contours. Now look at the third location, which is the infrahylar region. You at least question increased density here with a uh, mass that might have a bulge in this area. So you're suspecting that there's an abnormality in the subcarinal region as well. Multiplicity of the abnormality in the mediastinum, the right hilum, and the subcarinal region raises the possibility of lymphadenopathy. Looking at the lateral chest radiograph of this abnormal case, you'll see the tracheal air column, you'll see the hilar region. You could see white vessels in front and behind the airways. However, you have increased density with a bulging contour inferiorly here. Remember, this area should be a clean area below the hyalur region, and this is not the case. Whenever you see what seems to be an abnormality that surrounds the hyalur area, this is also a sign that uh, favors lymphadenopathy. Now that you're suspecting intrathoracic lymphadenopathy, the differential diagnosis simply goes under one of three categories. So the three entities are neoplasms. You could include metastasis and lymphoma here. The second entity would be uh, infection, where you'd think about tuberculosis, fungal infection, and others. The final category would be idiopathic, where sarcoid is a main consideration. 
So if you consider lymphoma, metastasis, tuberculosis, fungal infection, and sarcoidosis, you're actually good. Infections of this extent would uh, typically result in a patient who's really sick. If the patient is not that sick, you would consider the possibility of uh, either metastasis or sarcoid. Lymphoma could go both ways. However, you'd expect the patient to have some symptoms, such as this case, where the patient was short of breath and had easy fatigability. Of course, adding more clinical information and lab results would make your differential diagnosis easier. And here's the CT scan on the same patient, confirming the presence of uh, multiple enlarged lymph nodes within the mediastinum. You see the lymph nodes in the paratracheal regions. You see them in other areas within the mediastinum as well. You also see that large area of right hilar lymphadenopathy that we detected on chest X-ray, and you also see subcarinal lymphadenopathy, uh, which along with the infrahilar lymph nodes explain the opacity that we saw in the uh, infrahilar supposedly clean space on the lateral chest radiograph. This turned out to be a case of uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma in a young patient. To summarize what we learned today, first of all, the mediastinum should not be widened and it should not have any bulges in the contour. Number two, the hyla should be symmetric and the position, size, density, and contour should be normal as well. Number three, if you suspect lymphadenopathy, a common area to look at is also the subcarinal region. Chest radiograph is useful in confirming the abnormality. A good location to uh, observe is the infrahyalar clear region, where if you have an opacity such as this, it would tell you that there is an abnormality, very commonly being lymphadenopathy. Finally, big categories for intrathoracic lymphadenopathy include neoplasms such as lymphoma and metastasis, infections such as TB and fungal infections, and idiopathic categories such as sarcoidosis. Differentiating these entities is easy based on the patient's age, presentation, and lab findings. And that's it for today's case, which tackled a few anatomical points and an approach to intrathoracic lymphadenopathy. Uh, feel free to send your uh, comments, uh, and if you find this useful, please uh, help share the account. Uh, thanks again. See you with more cases later.